Today we're checking out the Carvera Air, a clever little desktop CNC that brings big performance in milling and engraving, all in a clean, compact, fully enclosed setup. It's got some pretty cool features too. There's automatic leveling, a quick change tool system, built-in dust collection, and even the option to add a fourth axis module if you like. Along with testing the machine, we'll be putting it through its paces with some real projects, cutting into aluminium, making a circuit board, and working with wood and plastics to see how well it really performs. So the Cavera Air arrives in a large box, weighing around 50 kilos, with the machine itself coming in at about 30 kilos. As soon as you open the box, there's a QR code right on top. Scan it and you'll get a step-by-step -step unboxing guide along with a quick intro to the machine. It's super helpful, especially if this is your first time setting up something like this. Everything inside is packed really well, manuals, wasteboard, and all the essentials are neatly tucked in with plenty of foam and plastic protection. Inside the machine, there's more packaging and a few more tools waiting to be unpacked. First up, the tool kit. It's got all the basics you need to get started. Screws, brackets, tool bits, clamps, everything for setup and your first projects. Then there's the accessory box with safety goggles, an emergency stop button, extra tool bits, a power cable, USB cable, a manual tool setter, and even a phone or tablet stand that can be attached to the machine. And finally, the materials box. It's got a variety of materials to test with. We've got an epoxy tooling board, both single and double-sided PCBs, ABS, acrylic, and even aluminium. Unlike a lot of desktop CNCs that show up as DIY kits, the Carvera Air comes fully assembled factory tuned and pre-calibrated. So there's no tinkering needed, it's basically plug and play. To get things up and running, there's just a couple of small simple steps. First check the power voltage switch. It can be set to either 115 volts or 230, depending on where you are. For safety, the Carvera Air also includes an emergency stop button, which you can easily place right next to the machine. All you have to do is plug it into the back, along with the power cable, and you're all set to go. Next, just download the free controller software and you're ready to connect to the machine via USB or Wi-Fi. And if you do need more help, there's the detailed setup manual included in the box and full tutorial videos available to walk you through every step. So let's take a closer look at the machine. Right off the bat, you've got this neat, fully enclosed design. The main frame is made from solid die-cast metal and everything about it looks and feels solid. Exactly what you want in a reliable desktop CNC machine. At the back of the machine, you'll find the main power switch, the connection port, a USB port for direct connection to a PC, the emergency stop connector, and even a USB charging port. There's also an external port that the manual mentions it's used to control an external dust collection system. On both sides of the machine, you'll find mounting points for the included phone or tablet holder, and this lets you set up a touchscreen control interface right next to the machine. Of course, if you prefer, you can always control the Carvera Air from your PC using the controller program. You'll also find an air inlet port and a vacuum port. The vacuum port is about 22 millimeters, so you'll likely need an adapter to connect it to a standard shop or vacuum hose. I ended up 3D printing a quick adapter which fits between the vacuum hose and the port on the machine. This vacuum port connects to an internal hose that feeds into the dust collection system. The dust shoe itself is held in place with magnets so you can easily remove it when working with thicker or irregular pieces. And when you're not using it, there's a handy clip to keep the hose neatly in place. You can really see the difference it makes when it's in use. Here's the machine running without the dust collection and now with it turned on. It definitely cuts down on dust and material buildup, which is crucial for keeping your workspace clean and your tool bits running smoothly. The air inlet connects to a small, adjustable nozzle mounted on the tool head. This nozzle blows air directly onto the cutting bit and work surface, helping with chip removal and cooling. And it's especially useful when machining metals like aluminium. Plus there's a small tap to control the airflow, giving you precise control over how much air is being pushed through. Since I was eager to start machining metal, I quickly set up a temporary air system using the air assist pump from my laser machine. All I had to do was adapt the 6mm hose to fit the 8mm air inlet, and surprisingly, it's worked pretty well so far. One of the biggest advantages of this machine is how fast and easy the tool bit changing process is. 
You just pull down on the side handle to release the current bit, then pop in a new one and lock it in place with the handle. I organise my tool bits by number and ready to go for the job. So I can change them out in a few seconds and jump right back into machining. You're not locked into any specific bits either. You can easily swap them out for different brands and sizes to suit your project. Plus, the machine comes with a special tool to help set up any new bits with a collar. There's also a handy button right on top of the machine to confirm the tool changes, so you don't have to go back to the screen. And the built-in LED indicator on the front makes it easy to see the machine's status, letting you know exactly when it's time to swap out the tool bits. The machine is equipped with a 200 watt spindle for milling and engraving, capable of reaching speeds of up to 13,000 RPM. Even though the power rating might seem a bit low, I had zero issues with its performance. The spindle is set up with a collet system that's designed for standard 1 8 inch 3.175 mm bits, but here's the cool part, you can easily swap them out for other collets to accommodate different sizes, like quarter inch, 6 mm or 4 mm. This gives you the ability to use a wider range of tools, making the machine even more versatile for tackling all sorts of projects. When it comes to the work area, you've got 300 by 200 millimeters of space on the X and Y axis and 130 millimeters on the Z axis. Of course, if you're using the brackets and top clamps, the usable surface will be a little bit smaller, but it still gives you plenty of room for most projects. One of the standout features on this machine is the auto probe which handles automatic Z-axis calibration across multiple points on your workpiece. Using the wired laser probe not only helps with calibration, but it also gives you an outline of the work area. This ensures you're machining within the clamps and other fixtures. If you prefer, there's also a manual probe included that you can use to accurately find the origin on a workpiece. Now let's put it to the test and run a few different projects. A great place to start is by going through the projects in the example guide. This has step-by-step -step instructions and everything you need from materials to tool bits is all included in the box. So first we set down one of the included waste boards and attach the L-shaped bracket. For our first test in the example project, we're starting off with a single-sided circuit board. Once the board is securely in place, we prepare the milling bits and send the file to the machine. The machine prompts us to install the laser probe which outlines the work area and performs surface probing for the auto leveling. After that, we swap out the probe for a V-bit, which takes care of removing material to form the traces. Once that's done, the machine asks us to install the corn bit, which handles both the drilling and final cutting paths. The result is clean with precise traces that are super accurate, and I'm really impressed how easy the process was and how well it turned out. Next we move on to machining ABS plastic. It starts by shaping the base of a stand from a solid block of ABS. Once the job is finished, the tabs need to be cut off and filed down. We can see some machining marks, but overall the result is pretty solid. Next up is acrylic. We're engraving a design of R2-D2 into clear acrylic. First it's engraved with the V-bit, and then cut around the edges with a single flute spiral bit.
Again, it produced a nice result with a clean engraving and a cut around the edges with little effort. Now it's time for aluminium. We're using a 5mm thick piece along with a single flute spiral bit that's designed for metal. Using the air assist also really helps improving the cut quality and keeping things cool. Once the part is finished, it needs to be removed and the tabs filed down, giving it a clean finish. All these components now come together to create a really cool final project. Following the examples, it's been a great learning experience working with different materials and seeing what the machine is capable of. Next we move on to an epoxy tooling board. It starts off with a laser probe that allows us to check the machining area is on the block and within the clamps. Then we switch to a single flute spiral bit and the machine starts a roughing pass, clearing away the bulk of the material. This is where the vacuum attachment really comes in handy, keeping everything tidy and the workspace clean. The V-bit is swapped in next to carve out the finer details and the pirate ship design starts to take shape with every pass. The finished result looks great with nice sharp details. Finally for the test examples we're using the optional fourth axis rotary tool. Setting it up is simple. With the machine turned off just align it with two locating pins, secure it with six bolts and plug in the cable. Next to make the alignment easier on the epoxy tooling block find the centre on one end and drill a small hole. With the setup complete and the bit loaded, the machine performs a roughing pass using the single flute spiral bit. This removes the majority of the material quickly. It can get a bit messy, but the enclosure helps keep everything contained, including the dust. It's best to give it a quick vacuum after the initial roughing pass before starting the second path where we switch to the V-bit to engrave the finer details. It's pretty cool to watch as the machine handles the multi-axis work, carving out all the fine details and proving just how useful the fourth axis really is. Eventually, you'll want to dive into your own projects. And it all starts with the design. Whether you're working with vector graphics, 2D files or 3D models like STL or STEP files, the key is choosing the right format for your project. Once your design is ready, the next step is setting up your tool paths in CAM, which tells the machine exactly how to cut, mill or engrave. For these next projects, I'm using the free Makera CAM. It's a super intuitive all-in-one solution designed specifically for Carvera machines. It covers everything from simple 2D to 3D and 4th axis paths, making it a great choice no matter what the project's requirements are. Once the tool paths are generated, it's as simple as exporting your project as a G-code file and uploading it to the machine through the Carvera controller. From there, you can set up the job and take full control of the machine right through the interface. And if you have a preference for other software, the Carvera Air is compatible with popular commercial and open source CAM platforms, so you can easily integrate it into your existing workflow. After creating a design in CAD and setting up some toolpaths in Makera CAM, we can send and test a cutout and a fine engraving pass on a scrap piece of aluminium.
The results were solid overall, though the surface did require some sanding to smooth things out. Later, we discovered the V-bit we had used had a chipped tip, which likely explains the rougher finish in the engraving. It was a good reminder to always inspect your tools and check everything before starting a job. We also created a small test bracket to try out several tool paths. This included pocketing, drilling holes, contouring and chamfering the edges. It turned out to be a great way to get a sense of how the machine handles different types of operations. Looking ahead, my next step is to learn how to accurately flip and reposition the workpiece for two-sided machining, something that will be really useful for more advanced projects. For the next test, we're carving a pattern into a piece of oak hardwood. The 3D model was created in CAD and exported as a step file. From there, we set it up in Makera Cam and sent it to the machine using the Carvera controller. The final piece needed a bit of surface sanding, but overall it turned out well, especially considering it was a quick test run on hardwood using default settings. The Carvera Air also offers some other optional accessories to expand its capabilities. For example, there's a 5 watt laser module which would be good for adding laser engravings to your workflow. And if you're into electronics, the PCB kit is a great addition. It lets you design and produce custom printed circuit boards, making it an ideal tool for quick prototyping electronics right from your desktop. From PCB boards to wood, acrylic and even aluminium, the Carvera Air handled all these tests with excellent results. And now with the basics covered, I'm excited to explore more complex projects and see what else this machine can do. Mm -hmm.